Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Sports Car Lessons Podcast with me, your host, Ken. I'm a retired teacher documenting my hobby journey here on the pod, finding teachable moments to share with all of you along the way. Don't forget to hit me up on social media, on Instagram, at sportscard underscore lessons. Hit the follow button. And you can also find me on YouTube by searching for my YouTube channel, Sports Card Lessons. If you like what you hear, please like, definitely subscribe, and most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. Welcome, everyone. How is everyone doing? Uh, if you notice, today is Wednesday. I'm dropping an early episode this week um, because this week I'm collaborating with Sports Card Therapist, and we're dropping a uh, a combined episode on Friday. So really excited about that. I hope, uh, I think everyone's going to be excited about it too. Um, we both, um, had a lot of opinions and, uh, had a lot of conversation about, uh, the Hofstra show. And, uh, we just thought that, um, it would be great just to collaborate and drop an episode together. So we're giving that a try. Uh, hope you guys like it. Definitely check it out. It'll drop Friday morning when this when this one usually drops. Um, so what's going on? My fantasy football. Come on, man. One and three this week. And and I actually had to take a screenshot this week of of losing. Uh, last night, Monday night, Monday night football going in to Monday night. Uh, I'm losing by two and a half points. I have Justin Herbert and my opponent has Jerry Judy. I have Justin Herbert and my opponent has Jerry Judy. I'm losing by two and a half points. That game was so bad. I mean, the overtime, they couldn't even get a first down. Nobody could get a first down. The score for that one ended up being 102.94 to 102.28. That was the margin I lost. Going into that game Monday night before that game started, Yahoo had me winning that game 99%, and I ended up losing. Come on. You know, I, I almost remember last year when I did so well, winning a lot of these really close in a couple of leagues, just winning these close games where my kicker would come out and get like 18 points on a Monday night. And, and I'd end up winning by like a half a point or a point. And I remember being so excited. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do anything wrong last year. And this year it's like, I just keep losing these games by less than a point. And I'm sure it's going to come back to haunt me late in the season. I, I'm hoping I can stay competitive to make it to the playoffs and then make a run late. Cause that's really when it really, when it counts. So we're going to start off uh, with the QB quarter, you know, the quarterback card values. This is the last week I'm going to do it. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why um, as we get to the end of it. Um, so I'm just going to jump into the prices, uh, the XRC, uh, Zach Wilson, BGS 95, all has it at 326. It's down $11, up $50 on the year. Uh, Mac Jones, XRC, PSA 10. Alt has it at 450, down $38 and down 300 on the year. Uh, and remember these prices on Mac Jones, Alt 450 and Card Ladder at 416, down $100, down $433 on the year. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, XRC PSA 10, Alt has it at 949, down $144, down 26 on the year. Card ladder one thousand sixty nine dollars up fifty four dollars up one hundred and thirty one dollars on the year. Josh Allen XRC PSA ten alt has it at twenty eight twenty one down one hundred and thirty nine dollars and actually even on the year. Uh, and an and interesting um, on this card right here. Uh, the Josh Allen, uh, I know there's, I, I watched one last night sell for over $3,000. So this, that value on this card is probably going to come up, uh, will come up next week because that card sold so high. Uh, the Justin Herbert XRC PSA 10, all 1632. It's down $1. Card ladder has it at 1550, uh, down $280. Uh, and remember that number as well, too, the Justin Herbert. 
Uh, Joe Burrow, PSA 10, all 1244, down $75. Card ladder, 1444, up $249. Uh, I think they're expecting, uh, um, I mean, I know Burrow played well this weekend, and, and I, I think when I see these these values where where all is kind of you know treading water right around the same price and I see card ladder with a big jump, we can see the following week that alt's gonna jump up too. Uh Patrick Mahomes, Silver Prism, BGS nine, alt has it at eight hundred and forty dollars, up at one dollar on the week and down one hundred and fifty nine on the year. Card ladder has it at seven sixty six, down three dollars and down $84 on the year. Uh, Tom Brady, Bowman Chrome, BGS9, Alt2346, has this down $500 on the year, uh, $500 on the week, $804 on the year. Card Ladder has it at 2310, down $540 um, on the week, and $990 on the year. Uh, and again, there's one on bid right now, um, of this card that is at twenty nine hundred dollars. So again, this w w what I see happening with these prices is, uh, you know, you have one low sale, they drop way down, and then have a couple normal sales, and they pop back up. So most of these prices um, are really remaining just about the same. I don't see them going anywhere. It seems like every week I've gone back and compared my notes and, and we're up a hundred dollars. Then we're down a hundred dollars. We're up 65. We're down 65. We're up $580. We're down $580. It just seems like, um, the prices of these cards are, are, are really not going anywhere. They're kind of just staying where they are, just bouncing up and down. So to, 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 bring this to you every single week it's just going to become monotonous of the the same prices uh bouncing up and down um so i'm going to keep these prices to the side and i think what i might do is come uh playoffs or go back and look at see who's made it to the playoffs and see and maybe even super bowl time see you know what prices have gone up and what prices have dropped down uh, this weekend, so, you know, I had Hofstra, I was going to be there Sunday. I originally was going to be there Saturday, Sunday. Um, I had a family obligation on Saturday that ended up, uh, falling through last minute on a Friday night. Um, but I had already given up my Saturday table at Hofstra. So, uh, I just decided to go to a local show. There was a local show here in Connecticut, um, that I went to on Saturday and, and it was really slow. I, I got there at noontime. Um, it was about the time I usually get to these shows is around, you know, between 11 and 12. And I'll tell you, it's what my business, um, I go, I have a number of doctor's offices I do work for, and I like to go in Saturday mornings when I'm not set up at a show. I go in there, you know, nobody's there. I get to go in and I can run all the updates. I'm not bothering anybody. So I usually do that Saturday mornings. I'll get up really early. I'll get over there. I'll do that. And then, uh, I'll, you know, about 11, 1130, I'll be, I'll finish up. I'll head over to the show. So this, it's about the time I usually get to the shows. And when I got to this show, and now I know this show is a very popular show, um, the, uh, it's hard to get a table. It's, it's been hard to get a table at this show. show. I was lucky to be able to set up at this show, um, last year in the winter time, I think, uh, January, February. Um, I, I think I sat up two months in a row and it took a lot to get that table. Uh, and then we had a bunch of shows that we were doing that were conflicting. They were falling on the same weekend, uh, as this show. So I told the promoter, you know, I, I, I was going to be out because I was doing the bigger shows and he understood. Um, so I know the show, know the show. Right. And uh, boy, I, it was it's just such a different vibe when I showed up on Saturday. There were a number of tables that were empty that people had already packed up and left to go home. Uh, and and there were people just you can tell they were just kind of slumped in their chairs that it was just a tough day. It was it was a really tough day for them uh, at the show. Uh, and um, I made no deals. I, I didn't even make an offer on cards just going around. There was nothing that I really, um, 
I'm being a little bit uh, more selective of the cards I'm buying, uh, especially for the shows. Now, you know, uh, what I've learned over the past year is I know that that people were buying everything. So people were jumping into the hobby. They were prospecting. So any cards, any rookie cards, any player, if you had them, you could sell them. Somebody was going to show up and they were going to look find, look for or ask for a specific person. So I have just such a variety of cards in my case. And I'm finding now that it's just not like that. So I've ended up selling off a lot of those cards or consolidated or traded up. And I've gotten out of a lot of those cards and I'm sticking to more high-end cards, you know, so the Brady's, the Mahomes, um, the Josh Allen, the Herbert, the Lawrence, you know, th those type of thing. I'm like, I'm trying to stick more with those cards, the cards that people are coming to look for. Um, and, and, uh, I did not find anything at this show that I thought that I could purchase and immediately drop in my case the next day, Sunday at Hofstra, and it would draw attention to my case. And that's really kind of, you know, what it's all about, you know, getting people, uh, excited about the cards in your case. So I did not come across, I'm not saying they weren't there. But there was nothing that I came across, whether whether the price was right or the card was right or the grade was right, or there was just nothing there that I came across that uh, um, I wanted to get. And I and I have a feeling other people are kind of feeling the same way too. I think other people are being more selective about the cards they're buying. I don't think people are just willy nilly buying anything that that looks like they could get it under comps and move it because I I, I think. The uh, I think the online stuff, the show stuff, I don't think the cards are moving as fast now. So people are being just a little more selective. And I, I, I'm certainly following suit with that. Um, so nothing there, nothing at that that show on Saturday. Uh, then I went to uh, Hofstra. Uh, I set up in Hofstra and shout out to John from behind underscore the underscore diamond. Uh, you know, he hooked me up with the show and, uh, you know, he called me on uh, Friday and said, hey, Sunday, if you want, come down a little early. We'll meet at this diner. You know, we'll, we'll have breakfast. So I was excited. I went down and there's a group of guys that they do that, you know, they set up at the show and it's kind of a tradition for them. And just a shout out to him to kind of, you know, include me in part of his uh, breakfast breakfast club tradition. Uh, so I was set up with him uh, and also uh Little John at sports underscore cards underscore fan. Uh, of course, we had a we had a square down there, uh, and I had a table. Um, the day was the day started out slow. The show opened at ten. It started out slow, uh, and I would say probably around eleven thirty or so. Uh, it picked up. It definitely picked up, and I know the uh, the people autographing were there from eleven to two. Uh, and I just, I think there was kind of a steady crowd from 11 to two. Um, the interesting thing about the show was that people were coming and they were asking about prices. And of course I have my prices on my cards and, you know, most, most of my cards that we talk about are at comps or just above comps. And, um, people would give me their bottom line cash offer and it was, yes, I'm going to take it or no, I wasn't going to take it. And most of the time it was no, because it was about like 70% of the comp or 75% of the comp. And, and I just could not, um, I just can't let the card go. It's not that important for me, um, to let the card go at that, at that price. Uh, and I had, um, I have my 2000, uh, Bowman Chrome Brady, uh, the BGS nine and, and been pricing it out here for weeks. Uh, and, and I know what I'm into the card for. I know what other people are selling the card at the show. Uh, and it's and it's about a $33, $32, $3,300 card. And, um, you know, I talked with a guy for a while about it. Uh, he was trying to make a deal. And he said, the best I can do is 27 cash. And I said, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't take it. Uh, and we talked for a little while, very polite. He went off and he said, look, if I don't find it anywhere else, I don't get a deal anywhere else, I'll... Uh, I'll definitely come back and uh, and uh, buy it from you. And he did come back uh, later in the day, maybe around 1.30, 2 o'clock, and he opened up his bag and he pulled one out and he said, I got one. 
He said, I, you know, for the price I wanted to pay. And I said, that's great. You know, that's, that's really good, really great. And I was happy for him. Like, you, you have to be happy for people who show up, who, you know, have a game plan. They show up at a show, they know exactly what they want. They know exactly what they can afford and they can go out and they can accomplish that. You know, hats off to him. Um, it's not what I could sell the card for to him. I wish it was. I wish his his budget and his price was what is what I had. Uh, but I noticed a few people came up and they they negotiated prices with me, and I gave them my bottom line price. And they said, "Okay, look, I'm going to walk around. Maybe I'll be back." And on two of the cards I did sell, uh, the people came right back to the table and they said, "Hey, the." Josh Allen, is that price still good? I said, yep. And they said, okay. They just pulled the money out. So they walked the room. They either they, A, they couldn't find that same card, or B, they found that card and they couldn't get it at the price they wanted. I was able to sell it at the price. So my higher end price, and I'm sure there was a dealer there that may maybe was not into his Brady Bowman chrome for 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 that much money and not maybe not as much as I was into that card for and it and it was it made sense for him to sell that at that price or it, it just made sense for him to have a sale to pay for his weekend or pay for his day you know just to have something to show for the the weekend for being there you know you never know what other people are thinking and you don't know what other people are into the card for so I could never judge. I could never say, oh, this dealer just let that let that card go. He lost money on it to make a sale. I have no idea. And I would never speculate on that. But these are the things as a dealer, these are the things that you're up against now at a show with, you know, with the market correction and 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 the the slow the shows being a little bit slower traveled. Um, that people coming up to your table are on a budget. And they know they're making they're ma most people now are making a plan. It wasn't like, you know, during the pandemic, when the show started after the pandemic, when the show started opening again and people were just showing up at your table, throwing cash at every card you had there. Uh, things are a little different now. Um, it's a little bit more work at the show and it's a little bit more work on the on the the, the front end acquiring that card at the proper price so that you could put it in. And when these prices are kind of a little bit all over the place, um, you just have to be careful. You have to, you, your, your numbers have to work and, and we're all going to get bit. I'm going to get bit. I'm going to buy into a card uh, that may drop, you know, 30% or 40%. And then I have to make a decision. Am I going to move the card or am I just going to hold the card? couple of shout outs, um, shout out to Jerry, uh, who is not on Instagram, who is a listener, uh, came and found me, uh, first thing Sunday morning, talked about the pod. Uh, it was great meeting him and, uh, Howard who is on Instagram at Howard Z I P O R K I N Zaporkin. Um, he was another listener, uh, who, I, during the, my little downtime on Sunday, I walked around and I came up to his table and he said, I listen to your podcast and we got talking and he said, this is my first show setting up. So congrats to Howard on his first show setting up. Hope, hope to see you again at, uh, at more shows. Uh, I know a, a number of listeners came looking for me, uh, on, uh, on Saturday. Sorry, I missed you guys. Um, I actually tried when I knew my plans fell through. I, I, I'd already sold off my table for Saturday, but I contacted a few people to see if anybody else had table space. Uh, I tried to get down there on Saturday, but, uh, but it just didn't work out. Um, but I did sell, you know, I sold some cards. I had some sales. I definitely paid for the day. Uh, I sold a few Josh Allen cards and I sold them right at comps, but you know, these were cards that, um, I purchased raw and I graded myself and doing something like that. I mean, I, there, I had a lot, especially with Josh Allen, who, you know, the prices are, are really coming up and it's always nice if you buy a raw card and they come back as PSA tens, right? It's, uh, uh, that's always a home run on something like that. Um, my uh, my XRC cards, uh, you know, they always draw a lot of attention to my case. Uh, and we talk about this. I have them priced over comps. Why? Because I really don't want to move them. 
they're, they're, they're really my PC cards, but I put them in my case. They're, they're more just eye candy for my other cards, right? I put them up front. So people walking by, because when you go to these shows and, and if you walk these shows, you'll know what I mean. There's very few XRC cards out there that people have in their cases. Either one, people just don't have them or two, they get bought up quickly. Um, so even though they're my PC, I price them high. I, I'm not really not looking to move them. Um, but they're, like I said, they're just eye candy for my other cards. It gets people to stop and they take notice and they look around. Um, so a couple notes on the XRC, which I just thought was funny. Uh, I talked about earlier, just remember these prices. So, um, if we go back to the, um, Mac Jones, uh, PSA 10, Alt had it at 450 and Card Ladder had it at 416. So I look up on eBay uh, 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 Bailey Zappi for the New England Patriots, his quarterback. Just thought, does he have an XRC card? I mean, he, he might, right? So I looked it up. And I looked at sold, you know, under the sold. So there was an XRC PSA 10 sold for $850. Come on, man. $850. That's almost twice the price as Mac Jones. That's incredible. I mean, all, all even has the card at 425. They have it evenly priced as, as Mac Jones, which <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I know the guy's playing well. Um but but I, I just can't see there's going to be very many sales uh, uh, unless, you know, when Mac Jones comes back, they leave Bailey Zappi as the starter. Then that would work. But I don't know. I was just so surprised at that number. Uh, a shout out uh, to Jordan at Mulligan's underscored sport cards. Uh, he uh, messaged me this morning on Instagram uh, he sent me a story sla story sale from Slab Mafia Sports, who had a Justin Herbert uh, XRC PSA 10. And a shout out to, to them as well, Sl Slab Mafia Sports, because I was able to make a deal with them today uh, for the Justin Herbert XRC PSA 10. Uh, and uh, I got that card. So they had the card listed at 1600 uh, and... I got the card at 1500 plus I paid for shipping and fees. So it ended up being about 1550 for the card. So uh, according to uh, Card Ladder, I got that card exactly at comp, which I'm, I'm happy with because, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't long ago I was at National and East Coast National and another show that I was trying to make a deal for two thousand dollars to buy this card, when people had it at twenty three and twenty four hundred dollars, and they they wouldn't budge, so uh, I am very happy to get the card at that price. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely a huge shout out to uh, to both Jordan for the uh, message to let me know that uh, this card was at the correct price, and uh, Slab Mafia Sports for uh, for the uh, smooth transaction. Appreciate it. One of the two cards I purchased on the Sunday, Monday holiday, uh, the Lamar Jackson, the XRC PSA nine, uh, that arrived. So, uh, if you're on YouTube, I'm just going to hold that up there. Uh, very excited about this card. I had this card in my case at the show this weekend and it drew some attention and, and a few people said the same thing. I think it's just a little high. And I said, yep. I said, but if you look at all those XRCs, they are a little high, um, kind of my PC and, and completely agreed. Um, the other, uh, card I purchased was the Jalen hurts. Uh, and that was the XRC that was sent to, uh, eBay auction, uh, authentication for, um, the, this new thing eBay does now. So it's passed and now it's in transit to me. The only downfall it just takes so long. They get to ship it there. They have to authenticate it, repackage it, and I'll ship it. It's like a two-week ordeal. So I'm waiting for that card to come. Uh, upcoming shows. Uh, I can't believe I have to wait a month now. Um, 
you know, I'm just, I'm looking at the calendar right now. Today's the 18th. My next show, it's the last show. It's at La Quinta Inn and Suites in Secaucus, New Jersey. That's November um, 19th. So I'm going to have to wait another month now to set up again, unless something pops up between now and then. Um, November 26th, 27th, which is, uh, that's Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, I am going to be in the, at the Westchester show, be set up there Saturday, Sunday in Terrytown, New York. I'll be down there with, um, John from behind the diamond and be setting up with, uh, Rob sports card therapist. Um, and, and actually I should say basically every show that I put out here, I'm always set up with Rob, sports card therapist. Uh, we we we're always buying two tables together. You'll always find a side by side. Another last show, Garden State Card Show in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey. That's December 10th, and then the Big Apple Trading Card Show uh, at the New Yorker Hotel in New York City. That is December 18th. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and if you like what you hear, please like and please subscribe. And most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. And until next time, be good to yourselves and everyone around you. Don't forget to check out the Friday episode with uh, Rob, sports card therapist, and myself.